Welcome, Mark, to the stage. Mark will um, talk about Haiti. Um, I, he, he talked about it uh, last evening a bit. Uh, it was really um, yeah, interesting um, to well, what, what it can do and what it can do for education. So um, welcome, Mark, and uh, yeah, have fun. Thank you. So, ah, yeah, now I hear it. It's working. Okay, Haiti. Uh, let's talk about a gradual programming language. Why gradual, and why did it uh, come into existence, and what problem does it solve? My name is uh, Mark Hiesen. I'm a lecturer at the uh, University of Applied Sciences in Arnhem, Netherlands. And Haiti was uh, created by somebody else, Felina Hermans. Uh, she's a full professor now in uh, Amsterdam. And uh, she had a, this is mainly her story, to begin with, but it's completely my story as well. So I tweaked it uh, everywhere where, uh, what, what she came up with. I came up somewhere else in time as well. And I helped coding Haiti. I use Cody, uh, Haiti for teaching. Um, so now this has become my story. How do we teach programming? Uh, a long time ago, there was this group of uh, schoolers uh, that I started teaching in Coded Dojo. And they liked to learn how to code. And I thought, well, I can code. I teach you. And then you start remembering, how did I learn coding? How did, how did I get here? And the same was for Felina. She was at her screen. Uh, somewhere in the, I think it was the 80s for her, it was the 70s for me, uh, just the 70s, uh, on the verge. And there were some, there, were, there weren't any teachers around. Nobody could tell me how to program, because it was 1979, there were probably some people uh, out there somewhere that were able to program, but they were not at my high school. They were not uh, the math teachers that we have these, these days that have a little of knowledge, little, little knowledge. There were books for Felina, and for me, there were magazines. They, come, they came from America. I was uh, 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 a subscriber of the Nibble. Uh, this is a, a, a version of 19, uh, 1990. Uh, this, uh, <clears throat> Nibble is only for Apple enthusiasts. That's the subtitle. And then there was Byte. That was for general... Uh, computers, uh, only all uh, PCs. Well, I was a, I ha was an Apple uh, adept then, not anymore. I built one myself in 1983. I couldn't afford to buy one, so I sold my horse and uh, bought all uh, pieces of uh, equipment and soldered it together to an Apple II, together with two math teachers. They were able to do that, not programming. <coughs> In these books and in these magazines, there were programs you could type. Uh, for Felina, that was mainly basic. And if you made an error, you got a message, uh, uh, syntax error on line 280. I wasn't so lucky. I was typing things like this. Or actually, I was typing the hexadecimal version of these numbers. And after I finished it, I could have my computer translated this to this immensely handy mnemonics so I could find out if I made any typing errors. Uh, as soon as I ran this, I got three options. It either worked, well, not very often, uh, it did nothing, or it said beep. Those were the three options I had. So when I went to uh, basic later on, I thought the same thing that Felina thought all along, compilers, oh, these are, these are great things, or interpreters uh, in her case. Um, you get an error message when you make a mistake, so you know what to do. This is how we learn programming. Probably all of you learn programming like that. Most people these days learn programming that way, and we think that is the normal way. Well, it is the most common way, but it's a very ineffective way, because we know each other. There's only a small percentage of people that actually make it through to programming, because it's 
not fun wading through all those messages. We think it's fun, but most people don't. If we start coding with children, we usually start with Scratch. Scratch doesn't have this uh, textual problem of uh, where to put quotes, and uh, it's, it's playful. So we can actually start very fast with the children, but they grow weary of it pretty fast. Uh, if I start this with kids of maybe six, seven, eight, I can uh, keep them enthusiastic for maybe a year, maybe two. If I start with uh, kids of 12, more a month, maybe two, and then they think, uh, this is for kids, I want the real stuff. Especially if they want, want go to secondary school, if they're 12 or 13, this is, this is to play with. Running around, a cat mowing, oh, that's fun for, for a time. And you can actually make great, very great uh, uh, programs with this, but that's very hard. You can actually program almost anything with this, but it's very hard to pro program a really tough stuff with this. So we move over to a very simple textual language, and that's Python. Uh, Kathleen was bashing about it a little, but it's supposed to be one of the easy languages uh, for learning. And as we all can see, well, this is indeed pretty simple. Print, hello everyone, hello everyone. I can teach them this, this probably in one minute. And then I'll have them have a go at it. And they start with something like this. They're eight, they're nine. They just learned that a sentence starts with a capital. So they get, oops, trace back. The file, print, print, name print is not defined. Okay, the first time you see this as a teacher in class, I think, okay, I'm, okay I, I can't explain this. I the, I print, the name print, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't recognize print. You can skip the first lines. Uh, but, but this is not easy to explain. This is almost uh, nasty to them. First, it's English. My kids are Dutch. So this is not the best thing. If they do something like this, and this happens as well if you have a class full of 20 kids, you get a very uh, um, less messy, but it says unexpected EOF while parsing. I was trying to convey printing something. Now I have to explain what EOF is and what parsing is. I could have a whole talk about parsing here. I, I don't have the time and the kids don't have the, 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 uh, well, the mental models to comprehend parsing yet. But this is what it's asking of me. I have to explain. Uh, you, you've, it doesn't say you forgot the parenthesis. That's what you want them to say. And now they have it all right. Literally nothing is wrong because there's nothing in front of print. Instead, it tells you it's an unexpected indent. Now I have to explain indentation in Python. And still nothing on the right side. No hello world on my screen. They're bored now. Maybe two are not bored because they got it right but they cannot explain to the children left and right of them for them why it's working. They, cannot know, they, they don't know what's failing them. So this is... Rethinking compilers are lovely teachers. If I want to teach them this, I want to teach repetition. Repeating something. I don't want them to be thinking about colon, brackets and spaces. I want them to be thinking of only one thing. All this syntax, it creates cognitive load. That's how it's called. It's using your brain for something I don't want it working on right now. I can teach you one thing at a time. And I can build up on your previous knowledge, but I cannot put 
colons, brackets, spaces, and repetition into your brains all at once. Why can't we do that, and why do other fields do this? And how are they doing this? I'm going to do a little test with you. I'm going to show you uh, 12 characters for one second, and you just remember as many characters as you can. Okay? Here we go. 12 characters for one second. Who has more than six characters remembered? No one? There's supposed to be place in your memory for, in your short term memory, in your working memory. There's supposed to be place for six characters. So, who has two? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, there were two lines. Usually there are some, oh, there were two the same. There were two lines. Okay. Let's do it again. 12. Oh, yes, I can uh, move. Oh, that was the reason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you would have had them all. Uh, all 13. Oh, okay. 12 more. That was one second again. Who thinks he has six now? Yeah, some more. Why? It's not completely strange. It's the same working memory, but now all of a sudden they're actually, they are making sense. It is like the syntax uh, that happens with children. One more. I'll move aside again. How many characters? Who has all 12? All of you. Why? These were the same characters. You're actually the real. Our brain works because uh, we might not have them all, but since the sentence makes sense, our brain feels the one that we miss. You were you you were all chunking. This is what it's called chunking. You didn't read twelve characters. You read three words, and three do fit in your memory as long as the three are familiar. How did? we get here? How, how is it that you, most of you don't even speak English natively, probably, how is it you all can all do this? You learned to read, and we started learning to read by reading characters. I could have taught you those first 12 characters, and then you could have read it. We start out with characters, and we encourage the children. Oh, wow, this E, this E is almost perfectly on the line. And if you switch the N, it's perfect as well. I is perfect, and the A, it's almost perfectly on the line. All compliments. If, oh, they like it. They like drawing uh, characters. Then we start to get, group them in words and in sentences. And as soon as they are able to do that, they think they can actually write sentences. And they say, almost. If you start a sentence, you need capitals. Okay, with a C, that's not a big problem. With most of them, they're completely different. So now they thought that they knew all 26 characters of the Latin alphabet. Now there are some, I don't know how many, 20, 20 new figures to be learned uh, to start up uh, the sentence. After that, we learn that the sentences don't end because the paper is uh, we run out of paper, but you can actually tell them where to stop using a period. Now we can even span sentences over multiple lines and we can create stories. This is how we learn to read. And the rules change. Kids don't mind the changing rules. At the end, we know how to read. Same thing for a math. If I have five apples and somebody takes three, how much do I left? have left? Two. If I have three apples and somebody tries to take five, how much 
How many apples do I have left? Yeah, zero. That made sense somewhere in third class or something. Uh, a little later, that was supposed to be minus two. But I had to skip the idea of apples because minus two apples is very hard to comprehend. Division, the same, eight divided by three, that what used to be two remaining two. And then it became two, two third, and then it became two, six, six, six. Rules change. Can we do that with code? I think we can. Uh, the other one. This is look at, a look at Hedy. I'm locked. Oh, this is not a look at Hedy. Sorry. Probably have to skip this first. Now you're looking at Hedy. This is level one. And you see all those tabs, they'll come along. Uh, this is level one. We have two commands here. Print and ask. And they can actually type just this. Print, welcome by Heidi. That's Dutch. Uh, if you want to be smart and you're very good at programming, you can actually do things like this. And it actually prints like that. After, everything after print is text. There is no syntax whatsoever. If I want to ask something, I ask, what's your ooh, name? And it will ask my name. And the smart kids now say, hey, where did it go? Oh, well, uh, I hope it remembers it, because there's a third um, command, and it's, oh, oh, it's running uh, again, sorry. And it's called echo, so you're, run the code, welcome, what's your name, Mark, so you're Mark. This, I can actually explain this in two minutes. Uh, in front of a class, and they'll be programming for a complete hour with this. Uh, the smart ones have, in, in, within five minutes, they have a, a, a program set up. They hide the code that you can, you can see here, there's a button, you can hide the code and then run it, and then they ask me to put, put uh, answers in it. Uh, what's your name? Mark, and Mark is stupid. Uh, things like that. They, they love it. Uh, In the next level, or this is level three, no, this is level two, we introduce the toughest part of programming, and that's variables. Uh, there are many metaphors or concepts to pr try to explain variables, like boxes with a, with a name on it, or, but that's, that becomes hard if you try arrays, and uh, we just stopped using metaphors. It, we just got uh, variables, and uh, here are two. Name is Mark, and age is 56. This is the only thing I have to explain. Everywhere I use name now, the computer will put Mark in there. So, print. So, your name and age old. So you're Mark and 56 oh, years old. This really uh, blows their minds the first time that they uh, see this. They, wow, now they really start 
programming. They really start to think about how they can actually make uh, stone, paper, scissors uh, pr programs, things like that. We have all those examples on top, so they can actually start programming and they can work with these variables. Um, but there is one problem. Oh, in every class, there's always uh, one kid that tries to sew your name is name. Well, there is one that, usually there's a kid that can explain why this is happening, but this is weird. This is, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. So the next level, we introduce a solution to a problem they encountered themselves. Uh, name is Sophie, print my name is name, no longer works in this uh, version. Uh, probably even get an error, because you try to use a vari variable, but it's no longer possible. Now I have to, my name is name. Everywhere I want text to be text, I have to put quotes around it. This is the first syntax we introduce. And it's necessary because they wanted to do something that wasn't possible as of yet. So this is going on, this is level four. Uh, this is going on for 18 levels. And by the end of the 18 levels, they speak uh, uh, well, a, a nice subset of uh, Python, because this is Python. And um, um, including functions, uh, loops, uh, things like that. So there's quite a decent subset is already available for them. Yeah. So this is why we made a gradual language. We build it like other fields uh, built their education. Build it from f small parts, sp parts up to the, uh, the thing, using the things you need until there is something that we all use uh, programming. But that this is this was, the, this was the main idea. This is what Felina built using to use in her class. Just a small webby thingy, uh, prototype, uh, poke, uh, pokey, uh, pr proof of concept, and then somebody else tried to use it and uh, somebody else wanted to use it and uh, some people were trying to use it. And by the end, uh, we did some uh, checking. Do they like it? There were um, maybe 10 classes um, that actually used this and two of the classes uh, of uh, Felina, there, uh, there were 39 kids in that, and we asked them the benefits, challenges and improvements that we could make in 2Haiti. And the first benefits were actually that they very much liked the levels, that every level was uh, contained, it was, it was very, very easy, it, it, one explanation and then they have 10 options to play with. Uh, they can actually do it, they feel that they're growing, they're actually a step-by-step -step guide. The, the teachers, not only Felina was using it, but the, the other teachers that were actually using it, they weren't programmers, they were just uh, primary school teachers that thought it was a smart idea to teach uh, kids programming, and they had the balls to do that. Uh, they said, oh, all kids lack programming now. And that wasn't the case when they were using Scratch or uh, another block language. And even all the girls, and I'd say even, because they, those were usually the first to drop out. They don't li like you guys, they don't like the puzzling or the, the they don't have the, I, I don't know what the difference is exactly, but they, they don't have the, well, some programmer gene that is able to get past all those annoying syntaxes. We're, actually we're the, right, the, the weird guys, right? What do they want as improvement? They wanted better error messages. I didn't show you just it, but we have damn good error messages. If you put a capital P in there in print, it, we would say you 
uh, typed print with a capital, you probably meant print with a non-capital. That's rather a neat um, uh, error message. And so it was this one. You said they printed print hello world. This is on level two. It's not allowed there anymore. There's a there's a comma there. This code you entered is not valid Haiti code. There is a mistake on line one at position 12. Count it. It's good. You exactly know where it is. You typed well a comma, but that's not allowed. I think this is a perfect error message. I wish I had these error messages back in the day, but the kids, being eight just learned interpunction, uh, inter they, they learned word commas are for. So they read, there's a mistake, you typed, but that's not allowed. Why cannot I type here? A comma is for a pause. Okay, uh, we had to change that. You typed a comma, but that's not allowed. And the weirdest part of all, these were all Dutch kids, they all speak English, so we think, but they wanted Dutch keywords. They wanted to use vraag instead of ask, because ask is a very, the SK is a very weird combination in Dutch. We, we, we know skiing, but that's about the only word that has S and K uh, besides each other. They wanted Dutch keywords, and we said, why? It was cluttering their mind already. We thought we had taken everything away, but we didn't. We put it in English keywords. So, we have many languages. In the meantime, um, oh, I have to stop that again first. Where is the goat? Oh, here's the goat. This one's in English. We mainly produce our uh, programs in English and then translate them into Dutch. Uh, so we provide two languages. But as soon as this happened, all over the world, classes started using Haiti and started uh, creating translations for Haiti. Uh, India, uh, uh, Arabic, Spanish, uh, Norwegian, everywhere Fellini had a talk. Uh, there were a few developers that started next weekend and uh, translating everything. So, what does it look like? Well, in English, it looks like pretty easy stuff. Um, we can translate this into uh, German for the sake uh, we're in Germany. And it might look a little weird for the non-Germans, uh, but we can all still read this. We can get along with this. We would notice if there was, a, let's say, a space missing. There's something wrong now. It's not red uh, and unzufällig. I'm, Germ I'm Dutch. I know that there's supposed to be a space right there. But what if we put it into this? And between unzufällig, there would be a space missing. This is what I get. I started programming on, on, on Haiti. Uh, doing the internationalization, and, pro and I moved all the translation out of our GitHub into a translator tool, so that people that like translating, there are just as many translators in, out, there, out there in the world uh, trying to translate uh, open source projects, that's that there are uh, programmers uh, trying to program it, but they can't program. So they, they deliver, deliver actually this type of code to us. Um, so if I have code like this coming into our repository, 
we have unit tests that extract the code um, and run it, uh, parse it, compile it, run it. And this one will fail. And I cannot ask the translator to fix this code. First, he's long gone, uh, probably did the translation two days ago. Uh, and as soon as we got this pull request uh, uh, working, I have to fix this code. Uh, I can do this, but it was quite challenging to do it with this code. And I, we still had to, because I now know these two signs that look a little like TED. That's print. And uh, I know now that there's supposed to be a space there. But I don't know what it says. But I, I can read uh, signs. I now understand why all those programmers are almost always in the Western countries. There is only 36% of the people in the world that can actually read these Latin characters. The other 64% of the people in the world have other characters. They cannot read this. If they start teaching programming on a primary school, to those kids, it looks like this. They actually have a, a, a notebook with all the commands so they can copy and paste them into their code because they don't even have the letters on their keyboards. If you want to teach programming on primary school, you first have to get rid of all those weird languages and have them all program in one. No, that was that. But we wouldn't. That would not be possible. So we changed the programming language so that they could program in their own language. So that's why it's multilingual. Not only because a few oh, 39 kids in Holland said, "Oh, you want Dutch keyword? Okay, we would." Do. Uh, it was fine, but then all over the world, kids came asking, uh, can you make it into this, can you make it into this, can you make it into this? And this was a rabbit hole we, we, uh, we got into, because even in France, there, the period in France, or an exclamation mark in France, is another Unicode uh, code than there is in the rest of uh, the Latin. There's a half a space somewhere in there, half a space. Okay, I don't see, I can't see it. I, I just see the text and I say, oh, this is correct. I don't see it. But there's half a space somewhere. And there is a whole bunch of these. Uh, once you figure them out, there are fantastic differences. Once you get co code that doesn't compile and you cannot see why it's not compiling. Oh, I was back in the day. I was lucky to be a programmer that survived that fucking ditch with all those weird errors. I got those weird, er weird errors again. So I liked trying to fix them until they came along for the hundredth time or something. Then, those two were finished. And from well, maybe a last year to up till now, we shifted. Uh, our focus to building Haiti for teaching. We used to build it for learning, but we want this to be used on primary schools and secondary schools. We want this to be used by people, by teachers that are not able to program. They cannot program themselves. If I start um, with uh, Scratch, for instance, it's easy enough but it's still overwhelming. If I want to teach this, and I'm a, a primary school uh, teacher, if I want to use this, the first thing I have to do is try to find the thing I want them to build. What program shall we build? OK, we will, we'll, be, we'll be moving uh, the mouse around and mowing, for, thing, for instance. So I go onto the internet. I try to find a lesson, and there are many lessons. Some work, some don't. And if, it don't, if they don't work, is it me? Or was it a bad example? I don't know. If I found one, I print it on a, on a paper, and I give it to the kids, 
and they have scratch on their screen and they have a paper on their side and then they go, uh, okay, what do I have to build? And then look up and down and up and down and up and down and they have all those uh, shifts in focus and finally, they do get it right, some of them, but some of them get lost. They, don't, they are not able to do what they were supposed to do. And that's why we have all those tabs on top. I'll show them later again. Every tab is a, an, an exercise. Uh, it has an, a clear, clear explanation, a clear um, um, uh, course, and, um, and an example. I'll show you later uh, that one, because I might be running late. So those are the adventures. And once they did it, the kids that actually produced this, um, well, I'm very happy, they're very happy, and I don't have to do an awful lot with them. Kids that produce this and say, I don't understand. I can ask them to reread uh, the, um, the exercise. Usually they don't read, they don't like reading, and they just start and then they want me to uh, show them what to do. And then there are those kids like me that produce this. If I was in that class, I would have produced this. And uh, I wanted to show off, and I wanted to have the teacher uh, uh, tell me how great I was. Which, look, look what I did. And now I want to make the hat brown. How do I do that? I cannot, I cannot as a teacher, I, I'm a program, I cannot even help them instantly. So I have this whole bunch of kids, all running around doing different things, uh, whether or not I give them one example or not, they will be doing different things and on different levels, and it's very hard to get them all in one line. It's very hard to have them all learn the same thing. <coughs> That's where customization comes in. Uh, oh, there's one, one more uh, language I'd like to show you. Right to left. This is, this is the really the toughest part, trying to debug this. Uh, you, you, cop you copy this into your uh, uh, notebook or notepad or something. And if, if I'm here, let's say I'm here, I know, watch this. I'm, pressi I'm pressing the right key, yeah? R I'm pressing the right key. I'm going right now. This is uh, just doesn't just just doesn't work. This is immensely difficult to debug. Oh, oh the, you, the, the, you can translate it better. It's it's been translated by uh, by uh, Arab, but there are many dialects and then dif differences. So your right might be another one's wrong. Probably. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, every time I try to find the button to uh, put it back in Dutch, of course, that's also on the other side now. Eh? Uh, or English. Let's put it into English. Um, I was logged in on the other one, uh, so I'll probably better show it. Because I'm a teacher. There is a four teachers area now, and it has many things. It has my classes, and as soon as I have, actually, uh, I have a class. This is my current, current class, and I can uh, have, while they're coding, live statistics of them. I can see who's working on what, eh? what kids is working on what, and did they finish it or not. Um, I can see all the errors that they're producing, so I can see what's going wrong. Um, they actually don't like it because uh, at, first, at first they don't like me being able to see all this because they're making, especially when they're 11 or 12, they're making, uh, well, uh, text that's not really to be out there about their mothers or, or kids in class or things like that. And then the first lesson I always show one of them uh, oh, you were laughing. This is oh, it's actually really fun. I'll I'll send it to your mother. No, 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 no. Well, but this, but this, this was fun code. Now, 
You were having fun. She likes it. You have no, 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 no. That was the fast, last time that they did it, but they still uh, do a little of it. Um, so I can see what they're working on. Um, and I can, and that's maybe the most important part, I can actually customize the class. And the way I do it is every time I have one class, the first class I have only one level open. They cannot go to level two. So if you're good, you can do all the adventures. And if you're lagging behind, you maybe have done two. That's it. But you still have done the exercise on the same level. You'll have the same errors, you're using the same version of Hedy, because every version, every level is another version. I cannot have 15 kids on 15 different levels because I, got confu I get confused as whether or not they need the quotes or not. So I, I cannot remember every uh, detail. So every, on the end of every lesson, there is a, there is a height quiz and height puzzle. Uh, they can do a quiz. And if they pass the quiz with a certain percentage, in my class it's 80%, if they, ha if they do the, course with a, uh, the quiz with an 80% uh, accuracy, then they can advance to the nev next level. Um, they can do it as homework. They never do homework, so I can actually uh, pretty safely do that at the end of uh, the class the next time they start in level two. So I can tell, uh, uh, get, get my group, of my, get my class all doing the same thing. I can also uh, where is my mouse here? I can also uh, delete some of the uh, adventures. I can say, okay, we're, first we're going to do only the parrot, and I'll leave the rest out. So now we're doing all the same exercise. I can also create exercises of my own. Uh, those were. Um, Oh, maybe that. I can exer create exercises on my own. If I go to um, uh, maybe a, a secondary school, I can, uh, I can probably make some that are specific for math or specific for uh, 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 science stuff. I can make uh, very specific courses for specific classes. And then there is this teacher's manual where there is a tutorial there's an explanation of what it is. There are YouTube videos exp uh, 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 by Felina explaining how this class is done, um, how you should teach it, and answers to the exercises. If they do the quiz, then the, the right answers are in here. And m maybe most important, to uh, come over very smart, all the errors that they're going to make in the uh, in the course of your class. We actually know, we log everything. There's done research on this, uh, on this data. So we know all of the uh, errors that are actually happening per level. And if you read these, le the, these errors uh, and the kids say, oh, this the, the, I get this message and I tried this, you can uh, uh, very fastly tell them what to do. So it's actually built for Teaching. Yes. Is it in use? Well, yeah. There was in September here. Uh, usually you see there is a 60, 70,000 uh, kits worldwide coding on a, day, on a daily basis. And in September, we have one day. I don't know why that was. There were 150,000 kids for you. So there was some, somewhere there was a big group uh, all of a sudden starting out uh, coding. But this is the, the main users at the moment, you, 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 mostly on desktops, because it's very handy to have a keyboard. Uh, but some of them are actually uh, using mobile or tablets. That's it about Haiti. It was named after Haiti Lamar. Who knows Haiti Lamar? One, okay, you've been to the presentation before, are you? Yeah. Haiti Lamar is a, probably used to be the most famous actress ever uh, for many reasons. Oh, it's the other one. I'll show you. Maybe you have seen 
her face. Uh, back in the 30s, 40s, this was a very famous, it used to be the, I think it was the most beautiful actress of the time, uh, first to appear nude on, 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 uh, in a movie, and she was an inventor. The fact that we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is her invention. She invented frequency hopping. That's why it's called after her. She was all in one. So that's, I think, that's about it. If you think this is a good idea, um, there are many ways you could try and help out. There's a, um, a fun coding uh, thingy in there because we have 18 different levels. There are 18 different languages. So the compiler has to uh, be smart enough to handle these, uh, these different levels. And it has to remember um, commands that are no longer in a level. So they're still in there. So there is this. BNF, this is Bachas now of Dinges. I'm not. I'm, I always forget what, what it is. But we extended that, of Fellini extended it, so that you can actually uh, move out uh, certain commands. There are some pretty nasty problems in there, like good error messages. We can still use some help uh, getting that thing done. Um, there's a paper on it. You can read about it. This is uh, the implementation uh, and about the uh, the, the, um, the, um, the 39 kids uh, evaluation that they did, the, the, the whole uh, results of it. Um, the highlights that were only told. Um, you might want to extend uh, our uh, translations. Um, I think uh, German languages now, have the, well, we're at 47 languages, but the Germans are maybe at 53% translated. So that's probably not enough. Well, the, the, the Turkish are at 100, and the Koreans are at 100, and the, the English are, of course, at, at, at about 100. Uh, so you can help. Uh, if you're uh, familiar with any of these languages, um, please join us and uh, complete some of the languages or add a new one. And most of all, if you're willing to use this to teach kids to program, that would be the ultimate goal, of course. Uh, if you have a coded dojo, uh, uh, you have kids, and you go uh, to their classes, and bet best of all is to try to teach their teachers. Because if I teach 40 teachers, then next year there will be a whole lot more uh, kids being taught and I can manage my, on my own. So that would be lovely. So this is uh, Folina, and uh, there are a lot of uh, videos. Come join us. This is where you can find us. We have uh, an, uh, uh, a Discord if, you're on, uh, um, if you want to translate, or you want to code, or you want to teach. There are all different channels about, uh, about it. and. Um, there's actually, no, well, I was talking about a missing button with Folina just now. Oh, you can see that again. Hey. And then there was last year, Giro Varosum. Is he known here? Oh, we, all, we all know him. This is the guy, this is a Dutch guy. He invented Python. And now he discovered Haiti and he was uh, excited about it. So that was a pretty cool uh, result. That's it. I think I have a minute left for questions. No, one. <laughs> Any questions so far? And otherwise, we'll go to the, uh, to the hallway. No? Yeah? On your experience, yeah, you said 18 levels. You provided example from uh, natural language learning and so on. Seems for me also quite logical, yeah. But still, from uh, from your experience uh, with those kids, uh, 
how do they accept that uh, on the previous level they were allowed just to type print and text and now suddenly they have to do more for the same result no no they, they, they it's not the same result. They can't, they, they're missing out something on one level, and that's why we introduce something new. So if, uh, if they want repetition, uh, we make sure that in one level they have to repeat something 12 times. Like, like there, are, there are those children's songs that go on and on and on and on and on and on. Now we'll have them code that. And so wouldn't it be comfortable to just have that printed once? Oh, yeah. Okay, now we have to do repetition, but what, uh, what has to be repeated? Well, only these two. Okay, now how are we going to tell the computer that only these two are going to be repeated? Well, in this language, we'll use a notation. Not a, this example for me not a gradual. You're just introducing a new command for them on a new level. Yeah, for me, uh, that command print, yeah, which you're already introducing quite yeah. early, yeah. In the beginning, it's without any syntax. Yeah, you just place yep. a text. Some some on some levels later, I would expect you introduce that the text must be in. Uh, yeah, call, like uh, like I showed you, that, that was because they have print your name is name, doesn't work anymore. So then you say your mark is mark. This is not what they want. So now they know they have to make the distinction between text and variables. If I have a word, I I can't use it call it X and Y, and that's, that's we, how we did it uh, uh, earlier. And those words are hardly reused, so you could get away with it. But if you use words that are actually make sense in a sentence, you get to this problem very fast. And they, they have to see the problem, and then we introduce the solution, and that's some new syntax. And they accept it within minutes. It's very easy. Maybe it's not easy, but it's. I don't see them struggling with it. La oh, this is this was the one minute. We'll move to the. Yeah. We'll move to the uh, to the hallway. <laughs>